Well, hi there. This is Ray Glasser speaking from Cleveland, Ohio, with a quick look at Windows Vista, which is the current Microsoft operating system, which began, I think, in early 2007. Um, on the last day of 2007, I got a new computer, a, uh, a gateway at Best Buy. It's, I guess, still a current model, and I'm really happy with it. So I thought I would show some of the new things that we have in Windows Vista. This is my desktop, and this uh, whole desktop is actually a photograph of a Florida sunset that my good friend in Florida took um, a long time ago, and I've always kind of liked it. Besides, I can see my icons and the printing really, really well. Uh, one thing that's new, and I can start off right from the top, down the bottom we have, for the start, a circle over here uh, instead of the square that you're used to in Windows XP. So that's one thing that's different. The look of the desktop is pretty much the same. You can move these icons anywhere you want. Now, let's go into some of the new things in Windows Vista. I have all these windows open at the bottom, right along the uh, bottom of the screen here, which I hope you can see. And um, in Windows XP and a 98, if you put the mouse over the little uh, windows, you get a little text message telling you the title of that window, no matter what it might be. In Vista, you actually get a small thumbnail image of that window, which is kind of neat. And it's in real time. Well, hi there. This is Ray Glasser speaking from Cleveland, Ohio. Very common sight to me. But anyway, uh, this is showing what is on that window. And it's in real time. You can actually see the movement in Windows Media Player. And um, if I try to reload this page, you can actually see it on the bottom as it loads, which is kind of cool. So you can actually see what's doing in any open window, even if you're doing something else, which is kind of nice. Now this is uh, what Outlook Express has become, which I've always used for email. It's now called Windows Mail, but it is Outlook Express. Uh, the look of the page is exactly the same and the interface and everything else are identical to Outlook Express. So no surprises here, just a name change. The control panel has changed drastically. There we go. There we go. This is showing an external hard drive, which I call the LaCie, because that's the brand name, and you can see what's on it. Again, very similar to XP, a little bit different, but pretty much the same thing. All right. Um, the control panel has changed quite a bit. There's a lot of new icons in the control panel. One that's missing, well, it actually has been renamed, is the one called Add and Remove Programs. It's not here under that name. Uh, let's, let's see. I haven't used it in quite a while. Program, programs and Features is what it's now called. If you double-click on Programs and Features, there you go. To uninstall or change a program, etc., etc. That's how you do it. And then we can go back. One thing that's also new is uh, one called Personalize, which is right over here, somewhere. OK, Personalize. Double click on this one. And this is kind of different. This is where your display settings are and these things right here. See if I can zoom in for you there. This is under Personalize which used to be under display. Now it's, again, just got a different name. So the control panel has a lot of differences. Uh, there's also one called performance information. Double click on that. And this is all brand new. This is all new. This is called Performance Information and Tools in the Control Panel. And here's something else that's new in Vista. Um, these three things up here, which I think were squares in um, XP and 98, they're now rectangles, and they glow when you put the mouse over them. They do the same thing as before, just minimize, maximize, and, of course, close out. But these things glow. And something else... The scroll bar also glows. Again, this has a lot of features of the Macintosh computer. 
You can see what happens when I just mouse over the scroll bar. Even the top one glows a light blue, which I think is kind of neat. Okay, so that's the control panel. Let's go back. And that's that. Now, Windows Explorer has also changed. There's some new things on here. For example, over here on the left, in uh, the column that shows your folders, you now have your name. And under your name are certain things, uh, some of which used to be in my documents. For example, music. My documents is in there. Pictures, searches, videos. This is all under your name. And here's something else that's kind of Mac-like. Instead of the plus and minuses, we now have arrows, kind of like the Apple computers. Points straight across to the right or down when something's opened up. So this is all... Uh, all changed. And by the way, if you minimize desktop, there's nothing below it. Everything now falls under the desktop. And there's everything else that you're used to. My documents are still here. And when you go in the search mode, it defaults to my documents. Okay. Now here's something that's also kind of cool. The top is kind of semi-transparent. You can actually move this around, which is kind of neat. You can kind of see through it to the desktop because this is like the current window that's open. Now if you maximize it, that transparency goes away and of course you can't move it. And again, these buttons at the top glow, which I think is kind of cool. And that's how you can shift around this whole box. Let's put it back in the center and open this thing up. Here's something that's kind of neat. It's from when you go to copy a file, it's going to my computer, and I now have the Lassie F drive, go to the desktop. If I want to move something over to my outboard hard drive, let me zoom in a little bit. This is what it looks like. If I want to say I want to move this file over to all my YouTube videos, you get a quick thumbnail, and you get this when you copy it. It's just a status bar showing how long you have left and the size of the file. And of course, I want to undo that, so I just do undo copy. And it's going to put it back eventually. Okay? Now here's something else that's kind of neat. I have downloaded the newest version of Real Player. I think it's 11. Now, when I go to any YouTube page, look what I now get. It's only there for a split second. Download this video. And if I click this, I actually get a box that I'm downloading this to Real Player, which is really cool. You can download any YouTube video to Real Player if you have the current version of Real Player installed. It's the free version. And this is really neat. This works for almost any web page that has a video on it, not just YouTube. I think it works with AOL video and God knows what else. I'm going to X this out because I don't really want to do this right now. There we go.